Corey, you knew America had a habit of spreading information. Do you wish you've changed your approach with her because of this to avoid becoming a target? Uh, the truth is I obviously knew that about America. I think she had a bit of a reputation for that in the house. I do think it was somewhat overstated, but so be it. Uh, when it comes to her conversations with Blue this week, I didn't know about them when they were happening, but she told me maybe a day after, two days after. So I knew those conversations existed and I could have been way more proactive in trying to, I guess, fix that problem before it spiraled out of control and both of us got back to it. Uh, so I just should have been a little bit more cautious when it came to that because, yeah, I didn't know it was a problem. I just kind of, you know, I guess was hoping it would work out when I needed to do a lot more actively. Given your knowledge of Cerise's reality TV history, why didn't you either keep her closer or target her? Um, you know, the reality is like Suri is excellent. It took five seconds of talking to her to realize why she's done so well in these shows. Um, she was not in a powerful position in this house post the Izzy vote. So she was in no way a threat to my game. There was no reason to target her. And working closely with her just doesn't have the benefits you would really expect because in Big Brother competitions, at least in the modern era, competitions are king and Suri has yet to, you know, do well in competition. So, you know, the uh, me being close to Suri might have gotten one more vote on my side, but ultimately this week it would not have mattered. And if I were to stay somehow this week, if I didn't get back to her, Suri would have been an extremely important piece that I think I've been getting close closer to. So it was certainly something in the back of my mind. It just didn't really pan out in this game with the way the competitions worked out this season. Um, but yeah, she, she would have been a great ally. Would you say you were too overconfident heading into this week? No. Again, I have no idea how this all was portrayed, but I was horribly paranoid every day about this week. Um, the reality was I've been called out in, you know, at least two ceremonies in the past couple of weeks. Uh, I know the target that's on my back when Jag and Matt have to choose between getting rid of Felicia or getting rid of me, it's always going to be more tempting to get rid of me. So until the nominations are locked, the veto meeting is over. I always assume me being backdoored is in play. The vibes were super off this week as well. Um, once I heard America had these conversations with Blue, I was really nervous that these were getting back to Matt and Jag. And if they were getting back to them, I thought there was a great chance I could be backdoored. Um, the day it was happening, I was probably 70, 30 thinking it was it was going to happen um so I was definitely not overconfident I think if anything I was optimistic and just hopeful that it would work out um but yeah obviously that that was not the case did your strategy change once you got into the show mats if so how no not really I think ultimately my game switched dramatically during the Izzy boat um, prior to the Izzy vote, it was the Crossroads, which is me, Jared, Suri, and Izzy. And I thought I was in a comfortable position in that alliance, uh, but the reality was I didn't have any agency. Right, because really Jared and Izzy were just, you know, the, the domineering voices who made all the decisions, and I was just kind of being safe week to week. Uh, so when that whole flip happened, and I kind of go with America and Matt and Jag, that's where the entire game flips. And from there, my game changed a lot. The problem with this new group I was working with was Matt and Jag were just crushing these competitions, mostly Jag. So by the time I needed to take a shot at Matt and Jag, I really couldn't because I just couldn't beat those dudes in competitions. Um, so the showman's really didn't change much for me. I think maybe people's perception of me changes. Uh, people are less willing to share information with me because they think I would immediately share it with America, which is not an unfair assumption. Um, at least, you know, she shared everything with me and I shared most everything with her. So I get that aspect of it. But the reality is the same could be said about Matt and Jack, right? The same was said about Jared and Blue. So you kind of live and die by your allies in this game. And I'm, and I'm comfortable with what happened. What game move are you most proud of and which one do you want to redo? Um, the Izzy vote was obviously the, the, I think, turning point in the game for not just me, but for just about everyone. Uh, 
Izzy was the dominant player in power along with Jared, along with Suri uh, for the first five weeks of the game up until she left. And then the entire power dynamic of the house flipped. Um, and that required me spreading so much information and swinging over Matt and Jack and Mimi and Bowie. And obviously America was already on board. So that was like the moment where I really felt like I was playing big brother to its fullest. Like I'm pulling people into rooms and campaigning and the votes flipping. And then I'm having a big argument in the Humiliverse. Like that was, that was incredible. It was super fun. Um, I think the double eviction obviously was incredible. That wasn't as much of a powerful move as it was just, I'm glad I was the one who was able to do it, winning that HOH comp in the manner in which I did, because I was up against Mimi and Blue towards the end, who both would have been disasters for my game. I probably would have gone up and me or Bowie would have gone home. So that was incredibly important. And getting Jared out in that circumstance, even if he walks back through the door 10 seconds later, was was awesome. That never going to forget that. The move I probably regret, I don't think there was much of a reason to get rid of Mimi over Felicia. Uh, at the time, you know, Felicia just yelled at me during the veto meeting. And I thought, well, first of all, it doesn't really matter who I keep. Neither of them are super loyal to me. Felicia, keeping Felicia is kind of funny because she just yelled at me. And also she's less likely to win competitions. And the truth is I felt uncomfortable with either of them being HOH, but Mimi probably would have been like someone I could actually have used as an ally. And she would have been more of a threat for Matt and Jack to try to take out. Whereas they can just leave Felicia in the house as long as they want before they get rid of her. Um, so I think that that could be a mistake, but who knows exactly how it plays out if Mimi's still here. Are you more surprised that you left the game with a mustache or with a girlfriend? Yeah, I think these things are really interconnected. Uh, the, the truth is, like, I'm very much a dorky nerd. I know it. I look very cool and I present that way for sure. Um, but this whole like mustache and then I had self tanner for a while and my nails were painted and I'm wearing all these outfits. Like that is full credit to America. She is trying to, and, and I quote, fix me, uh, which, which is much needed. So, you know, I got to say, I think me leaving with the mustache is the same thing as me leaving with a girlfriend. Right. Because you can't have one without the other. <laughs> Do you think spear spearheading Izzy's eviction ultimately caused you to be a main target of the house. Yeah. Um, so here's the, that's a move I'll never regret because I had such a great time doing it. And I think it was really important for how the season played out in terms of my long-term security in the game. It was almost objectively bad. Um, but I know with the way that the game shook out, there's a ton of worlds where I make a really deep run and I have a good shot of winning. So it's hard to regret it because who knows what happens if Izzy stays. The reality of why I made that move was you look at who was left in the house if I just wrote it out with Izzy, Jared, and Suri. You'd have Izzy, Jared, Suri. They're trying to get rid of Jag, America, and Cameron. And that would leave me with like those three, Mimi, Felicia, Bowie, who I didn't have a relationship with yet. Um, it would have been a lot of people in the house who I had a worse relationship with than Jared and Izzy and Suri. And I would just be hoping that these people would carry me through the game. Whereas I pivot, get rid of Izzy, and then I'm kind of in a more active spot where I can make decisions because I have a little bit more influence over America and Matt and Jag and, and these people. So, you know, I think I basically had two paths. I had, I can kind of securely get to seventh or eighth place and then hope to figure it out from there. Or I can get a little bit more agency, take matters into my own hands and try to get as far as I can. And I ended up at eighth anyways, um, but I don't regret that at all. But certainly like blew up my target level for sure. Why did you lie to the other house guests about what you told Julie the week you all did the exquisite bit? <laughs> um, so why is it good? You know, like, I think a lot of, I was going to say exquisite. I think undeniably exquisite or unbearably exquisite was, was my line. But then um, the way that whole vote was playing out with everyone, um, everyone saying exquisite. And then I was the last one called in. I think Julie prefaced it with, oh, I think I know what you're going to call me. I mean, the, the setup was too tempting to just deviate from that. And um, I just didn't want, you know, you don't want everyone to think you're like, oh, center of attention, Corey Wartenberger, classic, Corskeezy move. Um 
saying good instead of exquisite. Uh, so I just figured there's no reason to share that information. I think I did eventually, honestly. I'm pretty sure I told America, and I think I told Jag and someone else. Uh, but yeah, you know, I'm always trying to do what I think is the funniest thing. I think I'm funny, which I guess is the most important thing. <laughs> Why do you think you were such a big target without winning many comps? There's two answers to this. First of all, I think I'm kind of smart, not nearly as smart as people think I am, but you know, certainly when it comes to the strategy, like people in Big Brother always talk about being behind the scenes and pulling strings and influencing people without them knowing they're being influenced. I can't do that. I, I'm not nearly that subtle. The way I play the game is I have my point of view, my perspective, and then I try to like convince the person I'm talking to that my perspective is better than theirs right so I'm very transparent in what I'm trying to do and you know the way I strategically view the game it was almost like an inside joke in the house that I was like scheming and making alliances and all these things so that was one side of it also there's obviously a gendered uh, nature to this where you know America and I played a very similar game I won one extra competition but I think I'm perceived as more of a threat than than she is because you know I'm the 22 year old nerdy skeevy dude um so that's obviously something that's out of my control but it would have benefited me if i got further in the game and needed jury votes uh so you know those are kind of the two different aspects of it the truth is it was a weird way the season worked out where so many of the quote-unquote bigger threats went out pretty early like even people like izzy big personality big strategist went out pretty early same with jared Cam went right before me. Then you even had people like Riley and Heisem leave early. So like, you look at the house guests left. You look at me. I shouldn't be a big threat, but it's me who's being called out in meetings. It's me who's having you know a couple of big arguments. Um, I win the double eviction HOH, and then you mix that all in with just the way that I kind of look. I'm like kind of the rat strategist. Um, I think it all combined to make me a pretty big target, at least with this collection of house guests remaining. And last question, over these past two months, what is it you've missed the most about life outside, in the outside world? I miss the Kardashians. No, I, I, truthfully, the only thing I really miss about being outside is not being in the Big Brother house. Um, I'm just someone who needs my personal space and needs to be able to turn my brain off and nap whenever I want um, and just kind of step away from it all. And in Big Brother, there's no world in which you can do that right like you can go to the upstairs patio in the backyard and hopefully the cameras don't look at you <laughs> like that is your best bet um and maybe that's why in the past couple of weeks i've really clung to america the way that i have because it, it is comfortable right like it feels like you're secure and you can you know be yourself and not be on a million percent and even then you're still on because the cameras are on you and i'm sure the cameras saw way more than i would like them to see you know what i mean um so that part of it um, makes a lot of sense to me. Like my brain has not turned off in 79 days. So like the exhaustion from the house is something I really want to get away from. And um, so I guess what I miss most about the outside world is like just feeling okay and not depleted. <laughs> that being said, I love the experience obviously, um, but it's just, it's just so much. And I think I miss the rest of outside. 